Have you done your breast cancer exam this month? Hi, my name is Christy Best. I'm going to talk to you about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And what we're actually going to talk about is what Breast Cancer Awareness Month actually is, uh, when and why it was started, the stats of the of stats of on breast cancer, what the pink ribbon means that you see right here, the diagram of a breast exam, and raising awareness. So let's go ahead and get started. What what is breast cancer awareness? Basically, another name for it is the National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's an, uh, the longer name, but we typically just go with the uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's an annual international health campaign organized by major breast, uh, breast cancer charities every October. Um, what they do is that they uh, increase awareness of disease um, to raise funds for research and for the prevention, diagnose, and the treatment, and of course the cure for men and women. Um, it also reminds men and women that breast cancer awareness is the best thing is early detection. When and why breast cancer awareness was established? Well, it was established in 1985 by a partnership between the American Cancer Society and a division of the uh, Imperial uh, Chemical Division. I mean, I think basically those people are the people who actually make um, anti-cancer um, medicine. Uh, the, aim for the, the aim for Breast Cancer Awareness Month is to start promoting that mammograms are the first way to um, get people to detect that they possibly have breast cancer by finding a lump. Uh, the good news is, is the earlier people are finding them by doing um, different exams, is they are actually surviving. Stats on breast cancer. Um, breast cancer is the most common cancer found in American women. Um, one, in, one in eight women born today in the U.S. will have some form of cancer, uh, will have a form of breast cancer uh, before they pass. Uh, men at any age can develop um, breast cancer, but mainly it's found in the ages of 60 to 70, and it's only, I uh, hate say only, but it's 1% of the cases that will actually be diagnosed this year. The estimate new cases and deaths for breast cancer in the U.S. at least for 2014, as you see, is 232,670 new cases for females, and then we have 2,360 for males. So as you said, the 1% is 1%. Uh, for deaths, unfortunately, we have still about pretty high in deaths because it's when people don't do the breast exams, don't go with the mammograms, that kind of thing. So women, we have 40,000, and for men, Again, it's the lower number, but uh, 423. What is the pink ribbon? I have it on my shirt. I wear it constantly. My best friend actually was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 31. So I love the color pink, and I wear it probably more than I need to, but I wear it because most everything I buy um, actually goes into donation of some kind of breast cancer awareness. So I take it very seriously. But it was actually... Um, it actually, the, the pink ribbon actually first showed up in 1991. Uh, Susan Komen, uh, G. Komen, that's the most common name you hear when you hear about the breast cancer and the pink ribbon. She started handing them out randomly in a New York um, race that was participating in it. And so she started handing them out just to kind of, kind of put it out there like that. Um, it kind of kicked off and did really well. And in 1993, only two years later, the editor-in-chief of um, Self Magazine and the vice president uh, Estee Lauder um, founded an actual cancer research foundation and actually established the pink ribbon was their official symbol. So they actually have it copyrighted as theirs, but they allow other people to use it. Um, in addition to um, the pink ribbon, you'll see the pink ribbon, of course, in about a week, you'll start seeing them on NFL players. You'll see the socks, the armbands, the helmets. Um, so you'll start seeing them. And surprisingly, more research I did, I actually found out that there's actually landmarks uh, like the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, Niagara Falls, which I'd actually kind of like to see because it's pink water, that'd be pretty awesome. Um, the Harbor Bridge in um, Sydney, and of course the Arch in Rome. So those are some examples of how this has got so big um, and it's been worldwide. Now, the next slide I want to show you is basically a diagram of a breast, breast exam. It's pretty basic. It's basically, they're basically telling you the best place to do it usually is your shower because you usually have that spare time to do something like that. Um, so here's an illustration on that. Basically, all women, um, all adult women, 
are encouraged to do breast exams on a monthly basis, or men, uh, not so old at the age of 35, uh, are they encouraged to actually do it every 6 to 12 months. The reason they only do it every 6 to 12 months is the amount of tissue, they don't have as, nearly as amount of tissue as women, so therefore, yeah, you don't, they, it's harder to detect and they don't feel like they need to. But unfortunately, again, we do have that 1%. Uh, while mammograms um, can help you detect cancer in the lung, um, self-exams uh, is actually the number one way of finding out, and it's actually 40% um, of people who actually are doing exams on themselves are actually finding that they have cancer earlier now, and it's able, and that's how they're able to survive. Uh, one of the last things is raising, raising awareness. One of the first things, um, the first race for Race for the Cure is 1983. That's the biggest everyone always sees. They have them all over the country in the U.S. And now they have them out to at least 50 countries outside the U.S. I'm actually stationed in the United Kingdom. Well, right now I'm not physically there. I'm somewhere else. But um, we actually had four Race for the Cures just in my area and anything. So people get really into it. They understand it. There's so many fun, so much fundraisers that go on for it. And the biggest thing is making, you know, creating that awareness. Like I wear pink, I wear the ribbon, I do that kind of stuff all the time. Uh, my best friend has, like I said, had cancer, and she actually has, has her own website. So I actually pass out cards for her website all the time because we keep kind of facts and information on that. And we have an also an app that you have to put on your phone that will tell you when um, your next exam is. So kind of like a reminder for your phone. Um, all over the world, like I said, you know, everyone's encouraged or everyone is going for this whole pink ribbon and uh, supporting breast cancer. Workplaces, what they're doing, they do a breast cancer day and actually they can come in all in pink clothing. Unfortunately, military, we don't do that, but uh, after you do, I take care of that. But we, um, on one of my bases, actually we have a breast cancer run, so it's encouraged to dress all in pink and run and you raise money and that kind of thing. We usually do about five, ten minutes, or five or ten dollars to just to be into the race. Um, the events, like I said, are held globally and anything in more than 50 countries just outside the U.S. And another way of help this, um, from raising awareness would be displaying posters, asking at local clinics or hospitals to see if they're willing to come into our commander's call or into a brief and kind of giving us all a reminder of what we, um, of how important it is that we take care of this and be aware of breast cancer. So that, um, so let me just tell you, we're gonna, um, a summary of what we spoke about. We spoke about what Cancer Awareness Month is, uh, when and where, uh, or when and why it was started, uh, the stats on the breast cancer, uh, what the pink ribbon is, a diagram of the exam tells you the percentages, and raising awareness. I hope you learned something new from uh, this brief today, and thank you.